This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. What happens at 42 years old when you get a devastating diagnosis and your life is so full that you don't have time for the disease? Well, with me is Jennifer Beck. You've been in news, you've been in television, you've been a writer, you're a swim mom, mm -hmm. uh, you're a wife, you're a homeowner, you got everything to take care of, and all of a sudden at 42, you're a health nut too, really. Yeah, I mean, people that's would, right. Uh, at 42 years old, uh, something happened. 42 years old, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, ah. invasive lobular carcinoma. You were 42 when you were diagnosed, but you actually found it yourself prior to that, and they, you didn't think it was breast cancer then, or the doctors weren't sure? Or? Well, back in March of 2016, which would have made me 41, 40, mm -hmm. somewhere around there, mm -hmm. um, I found what felt like a small, hard marble mm -hmm. in my left breast, and that was back, I said, in March of 2016. Uh, you mentioned I'm a health nut. I am. I'm a natural health nut. So what made sense in my own understanding was to move in that natural health mode. So mm -hmm. I sought out a doctor out of town. Um, I started going through a series of scans and blood work and a variety of things. And I did that for uh, a good year and a half. And I kept being told that I was in a risk category, but they didn't think it was cancer. I started getting really sick. I mean, mm -hmm. I had I would be sick for, I think, 10 months straight with a cold that would last forever. Okay. I, uh, I had a strange, I mean, every single day I had to take a nap because it was like my body overtook me and I had to rest. Um, and that wasn't normal for you. I mean, it, it wasn't normal. I mean, you're a high energy person. So, I mean, you automatically think I, th this really is very, very serious. I've got to do something else. Well, I was pretty confused since I did have a doctor, so I'm not going to name because I'm not yeah. here to call them out. Yeah. But, you know, telling me, we just think this is the way you present. Mm -hmm. We think you're okay. So I had doctors telling me that. But then on the other side, I'm thinking, I can't, I can't even mow for 10 minutes. I mean, I had run, run a half marathon just sure. a few years earlier. Mm -hmm. I couldn't mow. Um, and then it started messing with my mind. I couldn't think properly. I couldn't work properly. Um, were you convinced that, that it was stress or were you trying to convince yourself that it was well, stress and overwork? At and this point, I was really starting to wonder. Mm -hmm. I actually had something go through my mind thinking, I feel like something is trying to kill me from the inside mm -hmm. out. And finally in October, well, well, I how, ditched yeah. all the doctors. How were you praying at that point? I was, I was choosing to believe what I had been told mm -hmm. was that we live, in, we live in an environment with all these toxins and all these yeah. things that, that cause women to now have red flags mm -hmm. on different scans sure. that they do. So, Which is absolutely true. Yeah. Endocrinologists are proving that every day. And I was doing the things that were being, I was being advised to do to help improve mm -hmm. all these situations. I was taking a lot of supplements. I was eating the right kinds of foods. I was staying away from certain Wi-Fi types of things. Mm -hmm. I was doing all of that. So as I prayed... Um, I, 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 my prayers, I just felt confused. Okay. I felt confused. But you know God doesn't want you to have a, a, a confused mind. <laughs> so you knew that. I mean, you know Scripture. Where did it go from that point? Well, by October of 2017. This is two years later. So yeah. Almost, yeah. October of 2017, I just, I felt like I was self-destructing. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't get along with anybody I worked with. I couldn't even feel fathom. We, we were in the process of making some big changes here at TV 44, mm -hmm. and I couldn't mentally figure out how to do them. I couldn't, my brain wasn't working right. I felt like everybody hated me. Uh, it was this, it, 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 I mean, you'd be just, yeah, emotionally, physically, mentally, I mean, it's just taken over your life. And then the largest tumor that was in my left mm -hmm. breast, I could see. Oh. I could see it. I could feel it. I, I I watched it grow. Did you feel like the enemy really had you at that point? Now that I look back, I really do. You know, I was so confused at that yeah. time. And the enemy wants us to be confused. Okay. Because, on every front. Because when we're confused, we can't be doing what mm. God wants us to be doing. But thankfully, God is such an awesome God that he's bigger than that confusion. Yeah. So I got to a point where I just realized everything I've been trying is, whatever it is, is not working. Something is seriously wrong, and I need to take another step. And that was a turning point mm -hmm. for me. 
So that's that next step was a whole new set of doctors, or mm -hmm. and they and they found the cancer at that point. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, you know I'm really a holistic natural mm -hmm. health person, and that was in my mind the way to go. Um, but Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. And I had to reject my own understanding and realize that I wasn't really looking at, for God's understanding. I thought I knew what I was supposed mm -hmm. to be doing, but I didn't. So I moved right into conventional medicine, a place that I really hadn't been in for years and years yeah. and years. And they whipped me up. And the next thing you do, it was, I knew in a matter of days I was diagnosed test, with test, cancer. Test. Mm -hmm. Okay. For these two years, you, you, you don't know what's going on. You're, you're battling it. The enemy's after you mentally, physically, spiritually. And all of a sudden, you know what it is. Is that relief or is that, oh, it's my worst fear. I just, is it relief at that point to know or is it, is it worse than that? Well, the day I was diagnosed with cancer, it was relief. Because for two years prior, I, I, I felt like I'd been battling it by myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, God was with me. Sure. Clearly, God was with me. But I felt like I was... I couldn't get anybody to take me seriously because I looked good, because mm -hmm. I looked healthy. I finally had people who wanted to help me, and that was such a relief. Yeah. Um, you know, God has given doctors such great yeah. knowledge, they knew and I'm what, here today knew, because yeah, of it. They knew what it was, and then you knew what it was. So you knew, you, you, at that point in time, you know what you're fighting. Mm -hmm. And it's always easier to go into a battle if you know who the enemy is and what the enemy's doing. Now, I have to admit, the, second, the first thing I did, I was relieved. The second thing I did was I ate the worst meal that I ever had. <laughs> I'd spent 10 years eating the right foods, doing the right things, and I thought, well, that didn't work. So I went out and ate the worst meal I possibly could. But that was short term, I yeah, promise. I, I got that. right back on yes. I got right back on the right wagon after that. After all those years. <laughs> We're going to come back and talk some more about this. But... Uh, uh, because there really is some things that you're going through and that you continue to go through that, that uh, you, you see God in, in all of this. So we'll be right back. We'll be right back after this. Our culture is moving away from a biblically-based lifestyle faster than ever in history. Even many believers struggle to explain their own viewpoint on who Jesus really is. God says in the Old Testament that my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. That's why TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Lacey, a program that discusses biblical issues and how they relate to our culture today. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, so no topics are off limits. But we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners. Maybe you've never supported a Christian media ministry before, but in today's world, our message is needed more than ever, and it only takes a minute to give. Go to WTLW.com and click Get Involved, then Donate. Your gift of $20, 50 or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. I'm back with Jennifer Beck, and we're talking about some really, really tough things. At 42 years old, you, you found out you're diagnosed with breast cancer. Now you've got to fight the battle, mm -hmm. but you're still in the middle of work. You still got children you're raising, mm -hmm. still got a husband, still got a home, and you're in the middle of ministry. How do you minister to someone? How do you do for them when you're so worn out and tired for yourself? Oh, isn't that a question that so many pastors mm -hmm. probably also ask themselves over yeah. and over again? Uh, because it's a never ending, it's a 24 seven uh, ministry. When yeah. somebody comes to you, you gotta be ready. Mm -hmm. But here I was, literally at my lowest of my lows. And needing the ministry yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, interestingly, the first thing I decided to do was I decided to reach out to the community and tell them. I told them mm -hmm. about my diagnosis mm -hmm. right away from the beginning. Not that I was trying to look needy. Yeah. But there are hundreds of thousands of people diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And one thing I learned was I thought I understood cancer before I was diagnosed. I didn't understand yeah. it. And there was a whole network of people that were willing to minister to me, mm -hmm. but yet I felt such a heart to want to minister yeah. back to them. A new way, a new way I'd never mm -hmm. felt before. So how did you come to understand the cancer that you had? I mean, when you really say, let's zero in and find out what I'm fighting, what did you come to understand about it? Well, it's, um, I fell in the 1% category for my age range for the diagnosis mm -hmm. that I received. Um, while invasive lobular carcinoma is the second 
uh, most diagnosed breast cancer, it typically occurs in older women. And so at my age of 42, put me in that 1% right. range of diagnosis. Um, I quickly learned that making decisions when it comes to a cancer fighting plan, everybody has the answer for you, mm -hmm. but only God knows what the right answer is for yourself. So do you look at, look at various attacks, various plans, and say, and, and pray over those? Does God give you the direction in that? Do you say, this is my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put together a battle plan, and God, I need your direction on this battle plan. Does he show you these directions? My entire situation with cancer has just been all prayer and watching God lay out the path. Mm -hmm. And now as I encourage other people, I really encourage them to do the same thing. I can look back and see where I just happened upon people at just the right mm -hmm. time. And, you know, a mere hour before I was going to have to get diagnosed with cancer, I stopped in Planet Health just to pick up something mm -hmm. to eat. And there was John Crutch, a mm -hmm. cancer survivor. Sure. And I told him a little bit of what was going on and he gave me about seven or eight different questions to ask and things to do. Wow. And I utilized that you. knowledge for months and mm -hmm. months to come. You know, God just did that. Sure. Another time when I didn't feel a peace with the doctor options that existed for me and I didn't know what to do, I just started praying and the next thing you knew, Someone contacted me out of the blue and said, I couldn't stop thinking about you, so I started asking questions. Here's a doctor that's highly recommended. And that happened time and time and time again. Because um, how does a person choose what to do? Sure. Did I do the right uh, route of treatment? I don't yet know, no. but I have to trust that I did right. what God asked me to do. And, and you think you're, I mean, as you're following God and you're praying, you're, you're following this path and, and you've got a battle plan, you feel like you're kind of energized and I am fighting this thing. Mm -hmm. But we know that we're not exempt from pain. We know that we're not exempt from suffering. We're not exempt from emotional lows. Where, where did you hit some of these bottoms? I started in November. I was diagnosed at the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. And I started with such gusto. Yeah. Hey, we're going to get yeah. this. Mm -hmm. I am that's powerful. Your, well, that's your personality. I am yes. strong. I even started this hashtag of mountain scaler, which I'm not a hashtagger, and I did mm -hmm. that. It wasn't, but I'd say eight or nine weeks. I wasn't interested in scaling any mountains. Yeah. I was so emotionally and physically, and in some ways probably even spiritually, just collapsed. Mm -hmm. That it came to a point where I had to figure out how to tell myself just to take the next step to go to the next yeah. day. Because as you mentioned, I was working, sure. I had kids, I had a husband, uh, in, you know, all kinds of things that didn't stop just because mm -hmm. this had happened in my life. How do you climb back out of the holes? You can't stay in the valley. <laughs> yeah. You know. How do you get back out of it? The thing for me, I started giving myself some um, requirements, and one of my daily mm -hmm. requirements was to sing. Oh, really? There are times. Never when, heard you sing. There was, well, <laughs> I, if your you, daughter's a great singer, so I got to assume she got it someplace. <laughs> if you would see me driving around town, right. there's a chance you might yeah. see me singing because my driving time became mm -hmm. my singing time. And there were times when I was singing to the Lord with such praise, and my mm -hmm. arm was in the air, probably you know, two arms <laughs> a few times, not so good when driving. But there were other times where I just had to force myself to sing. And then I got to a point where I stopped singing because things got very hard. Mm -hmm. And after, I don't even know how long it was, several days, several weeks, hopefully it wasn't months. I can't remember at this point, but I can remember realizing I had stopped singing and I had to make myself do that. And I had to ask myself, God, what, what is your recovery plan? Mm -hmm. The doctors have a recovery plan. The medical plan is, exists, but I've learned that when it comes to fighting cancer, it's so much more than just the physical. Yeah, you absolutely. have to fight the emotional, you have to deal with the mm -hmm. spiritual aspects, and uh, that's where the healing really mm -hmm. comes. So where was the body of Christ around you? Is it, is it, do you keep it really nuclear in the family? I mean, you've got daughters, you've got an older daughter, you've got your husband, you keep it nuclear. Is there a bigger, bigger family around that that somehow keeps you energized, even if you're not even fellowshipping with them at the time, they're just somehow energizing you? Um, I have a, I'm a homeschooling mom, mm -hmm. and I fortunately had a group of homes. I still have a group of homeschooling moms that really uh, took it upon themselves to just lift me up. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very appreciative of that. 
Um, and then out of the blue, there's been just a few people who I call them my arm lifters. Yeah. And uh, when, when things were just at the worst, they were there, they showed up. Um, it's easy, cause, as you alluded earlier, being in a ministry, we're sure. always on in a sense. Mm -hmm. We're always mm -hmm. here to help other people. Uh, but yet we have to make sure that we're still fulfilled mm -hmm. Maybe fulfilled is not the best word, but we're we're full of Christ, mm -hmm. and and I couldn't I, I was not always doing that well. So I'm so grateful for um, yes my family, and then these moms who just felt burdened for me, mm -hmm. and said we're going to pray for you. I mean I'd get text messages out of the blue in the middle of the night. I can't stop praying for you. And wouldn't you know it was one of the nights that uh -huh. I just couldn't sleep because I was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. um, I did become very vocal, not vocal, but just very transparent. And I'm still very transparent. You can ask any question yeah. you want mm -hmm. because I discovered the more that people knew, the more that people were willing uh, just to, sure. to pray and just to encourage. But even being transparent, I mean, you're on the air, you're in a ministry, you didn't miss that much work. Uh, that's either got to be a God thing or you're just superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, I mean, you really didn't miss that much work. You had surgery, mm -hmm. and you came back pretty much right after that. Yeah, I took I took about four weeks off after each one of the surgeries. Four weeks. Um, wow. Um, the, it, it was a it was a bad idea the first time. I should okay. have taken more time off. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was I actually started back to work two weeks after the first surgery. Um, I had a double uh, mastectomy. Um, what which, did, What did the doctors recommend at that point? Um, Quit work. I have not found one yet that has encouraged me to quit work, okay. and I've actually, yeah. I've actually asked. <laughs> there have been moments because when I have asked. Maybe they realize, looking at you and, and, and talking to you, that, that you're energized in, in some of that ways, in some of those ways. Well, the first time, I, I have found that every doctor will advise differently. So, and I have a whole series of doctors. Mm -hmm. I have great doctors. I'm grateful for God putting together this plan. But after my first surgery, one particular doctor told me I probably could go back to work after two weeks. I don't think that doctor had yeah. any clue what I do and the oh. stress level that's involved with it. Sure. That was a bad idea. That was tough. I should have had more rest. When I had second surgery in um, April of 2018, that particular doctor was very realistic. And he said, look, you, you, you need to be off five to six weeks and you need to be completely off. Relaxed. Relaxed. Yes, completely relaxed. Take in some new energy. <laughs> and I had learned a lot. You know, our bodies, we have sure. to let them heal. Mm -hmm. And if we don't let them heal, our lives on this earth will end earlier mm -hmm. than we, we are supposed sure. to. You'd, you'd mentioned also that there was nights when you couldn't sleep, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, people got to understand that. Was it fear? Was it indecision? Was it confusion? What, what kept you awake at nights? Um, well, leading up to the surgery, it would have been concern. Um, concern I'm, and fear concern? or just concern for the future? Or? I tried not to be fearful. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I just, man, God and I have talked so much, yeah. even to the point where I knew, I knew God could heal me. And I would, you know, every single day I'd be praying. I'd even say to people, my surgery date is such and such unless I am healed. And we'd have these talks. Obviously, God had other plans. Um, but later on, uh, I couldn't sleep because of pain. Mm -hmm. Really, post-surgery pain. Recovery? Recovery was hard. Yeah. Uh, it was harder well, than I anticipated. Did you have any of Job's friends around? <laughs> I mean, the church can be full of <laughs> some of those people. <laughs> Well-meaning, but uh, how, do you, how do you answer those, those people that are the, the critics that uh, something's wrong here, you need to confess something, you need to do this or go to a different doctor. You get all of these advisors who really don't know sometimes what they're talking about. Well, I finally got to a point, and I, and I hate to sound, um, I, I don't want to sound disrespectful to anyone, no, but no. I've got so many people talking to me about things that I got to a point yeah. that if a person hadn't gone through cancer themselves, I couldn't listen to them mm -hmm. right then. I could probably listen to them now. Now I could. Yeah. But then when I was in the middle of it, I couldn't. I could talk to people who had walked the path I'd walked, yeah. but it was really hard for me mm -hmm. to listen to advice from people yeah. who had not ever been there. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot myself. I will, mm -hmm. uh, even today, I will only advise cancer patients a certain way because I've learned. Mm -hmm. sure. it, it's, very, it's hard enough as it is, mm -hmm. but then when everybody's telling you, you should have done this and you should have done that, mm -hmm. and it's read, because of read this. Read this, and, read that. You know. yeah. 
and you, you, you start getting all this advice, but as you're searching the scriptures yourself, and I know you've got scriptures that you've relied on, what was the hardest thing for you to get your head around as far as a scripture or, or a concept? I mean, you, you're reading the Bible and you think, oh man, I don't want to read that. I'll put that aside because I can't really get my head around, my faith around that particular scripture. The biggest thing for me as I asked God why, mm -hmm. why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Even to the point of, as I watched other cancer patients recover so much easier, yeah. and I asked God mm -hmm. why, I kept hearing God tell me it came down to bitterness and hatred and forgiveness. Ooh. And that's tough. That's gonna be hard to swallow. It is. And I came to realize yeah, that we can, we can get sick and we can go to a doctor and a doctor will give us a mm -hmm. medicine or a treatment plan to fix the physical problems. They can even do surgery and they can remove things, but no physical doctor can force somebody to forgive others. That's right. And I had a few people in my mm -hmm. life yeah. that had justifiably done things to me mm -hmm. in years past that I had every earthly reason to be hateful toward mm -hmm. them. And honestly, I hadn't done a really good job at dealing with it. Yeah. And as I kept asking God, why am I still having, mm -hmm. I, hey, this person had the same kind of breast cancer and had the same kind of treatment and they're doing mm -hmm. fine. Why am I not? And I felt like God said, you know, Jennifer, you can do everything in the world that you want to do to fix your health. But if you don't fix your heart, mm -hmm. that's what's going to kill you in the end. And that, I really took that seriously. And forgiveness, I mean, even forgiving that person, uh, they may be long gone, they mm -hmm. may be dead, you might not be able to contact them. But it does release you in a way to really understand what's, I mean, God says, if you forgive them, I'm, I'll forgive you. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, if you're harboring that forgiveness, you really think it can eat your body up physically. Well, as that, as that idea just pervaded my mind mm -hmm. and I couldn't stop thinking about it because I, could, I knew there were two people that mm -hmm. had hurt me and I needed to forgive them, but the hurt was really hard. Yeah. And, and, and as I thought about it, I did research because I'm a researcher and I found statistics that show lack of forgiveness connected to uh, health problems. Mm -hmm. I even read a book written by the chaplain at Cancer Centers of America on forgiveness. And mm -hmm. he had to keep saying, you know, this is not FDA approved, we can't prove this. But he had story after story of yeah. individuals whose lives, their health lives were changed, improved, when they truly figured out yeah. how to release the bitterness, yeah. the hate, and forgive. And whether that person deserves it or not, you mm -hmm. give it freely, and if they accept it, fine. If they, even if they never admit uh, they're wrong, but it does, it does for you up. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to take a short break and we want to be back. I want, I want you to talk to, to some of the people out there that really are going through what you're going through because you're still fighting through this. Mm -hmm. You're still fighting. We'll be right back after this. TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Placey to let everyone know that the Bible is still relevant today. Viewpoint is not only available on TV44's powerful broadcast stations and cable systems covering Northwest Ohio, but additionally, anyone can watch programs and exclusive bonus features on YouTube. And we've expanded Viewpoint's reach as you can now listen at work or in your car on the Viewpoint with Bob Lacey podcast. Would you like to help expand our reach? Then sign into YouTube with your account and subscribe. Do the same on your favorite podcast app. By subscribing, rating, and sharing Viewpoint content, you will help this life-changing media show up on more search engines as popular and trending. If everyone watching right now could do that, Viewpoint would become more visible worldwide to online viewers in places even missionaries can't reach. Help us today reach the world. Share Viewpoint with Bob Placey today. back with Jennifer Beck. We've been talking about some really, really tough mm -hmm. things because life is tough and we're not, we're not absolved from it as, as, as believers. I mean, pain is a real thing, emotional pain, spiritual pain, confusion. You went through all of that, but you're still fighting through a lot of these things. I mean, you're still in the midst of the battle. I mean, you're on top of a lot of it, but at the same time, you, it's, it's a daily thing with you. Am I cancer free? I don't really know. You know, in the end, only God really knows. Yeah. But then you think, why would God even allow cancer to still be there? You know, so many questions that we Christians yeah, I mean, he's dealt, can, can go through. Yeah. 
I mean, you think, okay, I'm over the top of this. God has called me to forgive some people. I've looked at this. I've looked at that. Okay, why, why am I not healed? It was back in January I learned this because I asked God to fast track my healing. Yep, I want it now. I get sick and tired of it. I still do. Every single week I have to convince myself to keep doing what I'm doing. And I can remember where I was driving, what I was doing exactly when I said, God, would you, I know you can do it. Would you please fast track my healing? And the response was like a lightning bolt. Jennifer, I will heal you. I will heal you in my time. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you know, it was a couple weeks later that um, my doctor started working with me on emotional things. And so we really need to dive into so much bigger than just the, the physical stuff. Yeah. And I started finding release from things that I had been harboring for so many years. In fact, something that had happened to me 30 years prior, I was able to release that. Oh. And as we start to release these things we carry mm -hmm. in our lives, then that God, the freedom that God gives mm -hmm. us provides a healing that's even bigger than anything physical. And you know, at that point, I stopped praying to be healed. Now, in the, in the physical realm, I want to be healed. Sure. And for anybody out there who's dealing with cancer, oh man, I want them to be healed. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to go through any of this. But I don't want to miss a single moment that God has mm -hmm. planned to mold me into being the person that God wanted mm -hmm. me to be. And if that means I have to be sick longer to get there, I'm willing to that's, do that. That's, 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 a, that's a hard one to, to get, your, get your mind and your faith around because you think faith says, faith is now, I want my healing now. There are people out there that have gone through that, either ladies that are, have just been diagnosed mm -hmm. or somebody may be in the same place you are right now and they are struggling because they're in that low spot. It's in my lowest of low points and didn't even want to continue breathing. I just wanted yeah. to be done. I reminded myself that the year wasn't over and I had to keep going. I had to keep going. Now, I clung to Christ through every single mm -hmm. moment of it. And that is my encouragement to all people. And so if there's someone out there who doesn't know the Lord, um, try it. Just try yeah. it. I mean, this is your life on the line. Mm -hmm. What do you have to lose at this point? Just go ahead, yeah. pray, just, just, or call me. I'm here at TV yeah. 44 and I would be more than willing mm -hmm. to talk with anybody who's walking this yeah. road. Because uh, I didn't think I would ever, when I, the first year, I didn't think I'd ever get to this point where I'm sitting here right now talking to you. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the physical energy to do it. I didn't really care to do it. I just wanted to get to the next breath, the next moment. But now I can look back and go, it is worth it to keep going. It does get better. The, there's good yeah. things out there. There's good treatment plans. There's good books to read. The Bible is great. Um, don't stop. Jennifer continues her fight and is doing well. She really appreciates your prayer. If you have anything you'd like us to pray for, contact us via email. It's all confidential at prayer at WTLW.com. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, but we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners. And it only takes a minute to give. Go to WTLW.com and click get involved, then donate. Your gift of $20, $50, or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. Thank you for joining me today on Viewpoint. Remember, you can share all the Viewpoint interviews you've seen today online at YouTube. And you can listen to the Viewpoint podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere you can listen to a podcast. <laughs>